know, you and writer, director Matthew Yerby are both from Louisiana. The Dirty South is loosely based on the people and community that he grew up around. How has your home state influenced your own journey as a storyteller? And was that ultimately what drew you to this project? I think that was what ultimately drew me. But, you know, when you, a lot of times when you get a, an appointment or you get a script sent to you, a, a, a project, it'll give you obviously details who, who might be in it, who's producing it, who's directing it, writing it, where it shoots, um, log line, storyline, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so immediately I didn't know Matthew yet. I didn't know the producers yet, but, but getting the log line, the storyline, hearing that it was based out of Louisiana, filming in Louisiana had kind of a, what I was hoping for, like a true romance, Bonnie and Clyde ish feel minus, you know, you know, shooting people. Um, but like <laughs> that kind of, you know, start without even reading the script, uh, you know, made me interested immediately um, over the other scripts that were out there. Um, and then from there, seeing that this was kind of a, this felt like a modern Western almost um, and kind of had a timeless feel. It made me even and the, the character of Sue being so powerful and very well written um, that it made me also want to connect with with Matthew and 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 the project. Now life has forced both Sue and Dion to do whatever they have to do in order to survive. And while the surface Dion seems like he has this really tough exterior, there's a lot of vulnerability underneath. How did you prepare to tackle his very nuanced journey? Uh, pretty straightforward. You know, it's, it's, you know, not, I mean, I've myself personally has have been gone through, I've gone through a lot growing up and I know most, I know most mm. people have and, and, and all around the world. And so it's sort of taking, I feel like that is what you do as an actor anyway, um, is taking some of these things and, um, and bringing it to, um, the roles that you do. And, um, you know, if it makes sense. And in this project, it, it happened to make sense. So being able to take my own um, past and, and, and sprinkle that onto uh, Dion's um, made it a lot easier for me. Also this, you know, like one of the scenes that was very important to me is when Dion opens up finally to Sue yeah. in his truck. Um, that scene needed to be there, uh, at least for me as an actor. And um, so that I could show that that he's a little bit more misunderstood. He's not necessarily just this, you know, he's not a cold hearted drifter. He, yeah. He's got a heart, he's got a soul and he's sensitive. While with that tough, you know, demeanor, he's still sensitive. He's a victim of his own uh, circumstances in his past. You know, Matthew yeah. wrote and directed this project and he's acted in the past as well. Is the filmmaking experience different when the person who's created this universe and these characters is also at the helm directing and has worked in front of the, the camera? What was that collaboration like? I don't know if it makes it too much of a difference, but I just think the most important thing is he's he, he's aware of, uh, he's a great listener and he's a great talker and he's very, and, and, and a very good writer. Um, of characters especially and I think it's more just the awareness of being able to collaborate I think sometimes maybe him being in front of the camera in the past has has given him an insight of all right well let's do a take a certain way and let's do a take my way and let's do it you know like let's be a little more collaborative and I think maybe that helped it stand out but Matthew himself was just so passionate and energetic and so excited to be able to filming um, in this this town that he grew up in, and and um, in, a, in a in a bar that he used to work at when he was younger, and uh, I just think he he brought that excitement every day. Such a love letter to to Louisiana, and you've worked on projects of all sizes. What is it about independent filmmaking that excites you as a creative and storyteller? Well, let's be honest; you get the best stories that way. Um, yeah. you get the people that are willing to experiment a lot more. Um, you know, I wish we could get back to the sixties and the seventies and some of those movies that we were writing back then. Um, you know, it is, it, hark it harkens back, I think to that a little bit in, in, in it's in, in kind of a, an old school feel, um, that modern Western, but, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I think that those, these are, these are what makes it a little bit more exciting. Now, what makes it harder is you get an 
a, a ridiculous amount, and I mean that in a negative way, amount of days to be able to film that project. Um, and every it's all hands on deck and it's, you know, everyone, you know, fighting for each other, which, you know, in a way is also a positive. It, it, it brings a sense of hopefully camaraderie um, a lot quicker than it would on a big studio film or even on a television series, um, especially a beginning, a brand new uh, beginning television series. So it does bring that, that, that you get some, oh, you get some also, you get some magic sometimes. Sometimes you're able to film something because an emergency happens and you, but you need to finish the day and you need to get this scene. So we had a lot of amazing things that happened. This was supposed to be a summer movie and it ended up becoming a winter movie because of what we were, of when we were filming. Natchitoches, Louisiana is known for their festival of lights, the Christmas lights that they have downtown. We suddenly were able to do that awesome shot where we're driving around, which by the way, I actually was doing the driving and we were not being pulled. Um, and <laughs> you're able to see all those wonderful Christmas lights in the background, which we never would have gotten if we had done this in the summer. So you get these um, happy accidents that happen that generally only happen on a smaller film uh, than they do on a bigger film. Yeah, that car is incredible to see on screen. And you know, in the film, Sue's younger brother is the why she stuck around and is doing everything in her power to protect her family. Having had such an illustrious career in this industry, what's been that why that's kept you going? What's kept me going in this, the why? I mean, I think family and, and, and friends and uh, that are able to talk you out of the the dark periods and and mm -hmm. and and hold you up during the happy the, the lighter periods and uh that are ju they're just there to listen and you need people that are also um and what i mean by that is my people meaning my family that aren't in the industry which i just happen to be a first in my family uh for that and um you know to which means they care because they care about my well-being and my health, but also they don't care <laughs> because it's not so, in, a, in a good way because it's not their world. They don't under, sometimes don't even understand it. And that's great because you just need someone to be able to be around that, that just is happy that you're happy regardless of, of what's going on. Oh, you, you made a film and no one saw it. Oh, you made a film and it didn't make as much money as it was supposed to, or your TV show was canceled or da, 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 all this kind of stuff. They don't care as long as you're happy. And that's, you know, that's what you need yeah, in, in any, in any occupation, in any walk of life. Really. Yeah. But, and I got one final question for you. This film has made its way around the festival circuit. It's been incredibly well received. What do you think is resonating most with audiences? What do you hope they take away? I think they hope, I hope they take them that a way that it's just, it's a, it reminds me of a film from the seventies and eighties where it's really just built on the characters um, yeah. and how they react to real life and real life circumstances that this is as odd as this may sound especially talking about a film this could actually happen in a lot of small towns around the world especially losing a business to someone who happens where the poor just remain poor and the rich in that town remain rich and get even richer and um but i think that it's a story that can connect or, or and hopefully resonate with a lot of people that have grown up that way um mm -hmm. as i did and um, and that people that struggle with everyday life and then show that there's a hope out there. Um, you get a positive ending without giving away too much and uh, and how family can help family.